Hey, Joe and Jax, it's Uncle Mike again with another 10-minute tutorial for modeling in 3D Max. Today we're going to stick with the football theme and model a goal post. Now, there's a couple things we're going to do differently. We're going to be using some splines, which you've never used before. Um, and also, we're going to be trying to model this accurately uh, and base it off of real-world dimensions. So, let's go ahead and get cracking. First thing we want to do is input or import a image. Uh, that has all the information that we're going to need. I downloaded this off the internet and found a pretty good representation of what we want to do. NFL goal, here we go. Now as you can see this thing's going to be about 40 feet high, so 10 feet from the ground to the crossbar, 30 feet to the tip of the post. It's about 19 feet wide uh, and also we have kind of the side angle view here which we have a goal post, this kind of radius here, and then 6 feet uh, from the post to the front of the bars. Uh, this doesn't look like it's a complete radius at uh, for the whole way. It looks like it's about a foot cut off. So if it's six foot, we can uh, assume this is a five foot cir radius circle, so a ten foot diameter, and so we'll, we'll uh, deal with it that way. The next thing we need to do is really set up 3D Max so that uh, we can model this accurately. So the first thing you want to do is Go into your Customize tab, go to Unit Setup, and make sure you're in feet with fractional inches. You can change that how, to whatever you want. We'll stick with feet and fractional inches. Also, we want to change our Snaps Toggle settings. Right now, I have the 3D Snaps on. If you right-click this instead of left-clicking it, you come up with your Snap Settings. If we go to the Home Grid, by default, you have the grid spacing set at 10 inches. We want that down to 1 inch. And the major lines every 10, we want to put that to 12 because there's 12 inches in a foot and I think that looks nice and that'll work for us so we'll exit out of that and we should be good to go okay now uh, we want to start with the side view here and we'll go to the left side and maximize that we'll pe pull back up our little diagram here so if we've got a five foot diameter circle and it's 10 feet uh, from the bottom to the top of the crossbar that means that we're going to be looking at putting our uh, center of our circle right here about halfway. So we'll that'll be at five feet down. Um, actually, it might look a little smaller than five feet. That might be a foot. We want to maybe a little smaller. Let's go with a four foot diameter. So that's going to be eight foot. Uh, or, I'm sorry, four foot radius, eight foot diameter. So we're going to want that at uh, six feet up. So let's go to the circle tool turn on our 3D snap and we're going to come in here to let's see six feet and we're going to drag and pull this out till we've got a four foot radius so we can check that by going over here you see the radius is set to four feet which is exactly what we want let's go into the interpolation and by default you're set to six and if we zoom in you can see it's one two three four five six between the two um, kind of points, uh, the vertex. Uh, you can probably see that better if we convert this to an editable spline. So let's right click and choose convert to editable spline. And now if we hit the vertex you can see we have four vertices on the circle that define it. One here, top, you know, uh, bottom, left, right. We want to break these up because we, we only want this segment right here. So what we need to do is select this vertex, come down here, to geometry and choose break. Select this vertex and choose break. And then we can simply take these two and whoops. Go to segment, grab these segments and delete those out. Grab this segment and delete that out. And we're left with just the piece that we want. Okay. Now what we want to do is move this back two feet. Uh, because we know there's six feet and we know there's a four inch vertex, four foot vertex here. So we have two feet plus another four feet gives us our six foot setback. Let's go back to the create tab and let's grab a line this time. We'll go from the bottom here to this portion. Good. Let's create another line from the end of our radius here to where it'll join up with our goal post. And I think that is looking stellar. Uh, let's get out of our Create tool, go to the Move tool, and let's once again right-click and choose Convert to Editable Spline, 
and grab the bottom one, right click, and choose Convert to Editable Spline. So now they're all splines. Grab the first one, and if you come down here to Geometry, you can see something called Attach, and this will put all of our splines together. So you want to click Attach, select the radius one, and then select the, the upper, the big long one. So now they're all the same spline, but we have different vertexes, and I'll show you that. If you see, if you select these two, um, it looks like it's one point, but if you look down here at the selection, you can see two vertices selected, and we want only one. So come down here to uh, the Weld dialog box and just click Weld. And since they're right on top of each other, they're weld together. And now, if we select that, we should only have one vertex. And as you can see, it says Spline 1, Vertex 2 selected. Perfect. Let's do the same thing. Whoops. Same thing with this vertex. You can see there's two vertices selected. Come down here, click Weld. Now we only have one. Beautiful. All right. The next thing we want to do is make this, uh, give it a little more interpolation here to make it a little smoother curve. So let's go to the interpolation tab. By default, it's set to 6. Let's crank that up to 24, which will just smooth out this curve a little bit. As you can see, it's a much smoother curve. Now let's give it a little bit of mass. We'll go up here to the rendering and choose Enable in Renderer and Enable in Viewport. And by default, we've got the radius thickness set at 1 inch. We know that this is a 4 inch thick uh, post because it says it right here, 4 inch diameter. So we need this to be a 2 inch radius, so we get a 4 inch diameter. So thickness, let's bump that up to 2. Oh, that's 2 feet. We want 2 inches. There we go. Sides, let's bunch up, bump up to 24 so it's nice and smooth. And so as you can see, we now have the bottom part of a goal post. Beautiful. Let's hop back into the front view. And let's go to the front here. The next thing we need to do is create those cross bars and the uppers. So let's go back to our line tool, grab that, turn on our vertex snap again. And if you remember, we've got 18 feet 6 inches wide, so half of that is roughly 9 uh, inches, or 9 feet 3 inches, so we'll just go with 9 for now. It doesn't have to be quite perfect. We can always adjust it later. And so we want to start here at 10 feet, and we want to come over 9 feet, right? And then we want to go up basically 30 feet. Perfect. Right click to stop that. Now if we come down here, we know that this is slightly smaller radius because this says the diameter is three and a half inches. So if you divide that in half, it's 1.75 inches. So we'll go 1.75 and everything else is set up nicely. Good. Okay. The final thing we need to do to finish this out is to make one of these on the other side. So what we can do is go to the hierarchy tab because right now this uh, pivot point is centered here in the middle choose Effective Pivot Only, and then we can right-click the X to move it right to the middle at zero, unclick this, and simply go up here to Tools, Mirror, you want to mirror this across, and by default it just kind of flips it, but if you choose Copy, then you should have two of them. Let's click OK, and if we've done everything right, um, whoops, where is our, oh, there we go. If we've done everything right, um, we should have a goalpost. So we can roll this around. Yep, looks nice. Let's add in a plane so we look like we have a field here. Doesn't have to be, you know, too crazy. Just draw it a nice big plane. Um, we'll change this color to green by default. And let's go ahead and add a material to our goalpost. Come up here to the material editor. Grab the first one. Change the diffuse color to kind of a yellow with a hint of orange, which is kind of what they look like. Add some specular so we have some nice shininess coming off the light. We'll grab a nice light, target spot. We'll pop this coming down onto our goal post. Maybe offset it to the side just a bit, make it a little more interesting. We can modify a couple of the parameters of this. Let's turn on a ray trace shadows and we'll increase the fall off so it's a little smoother look. Good. Um, and let's change to kind of a renderer that you have because by default mine's set to um, 
mental or uh, final render, which you don't have. We'll go to the scan line, which is what yours will be set on by default, and just give this a quick render. Learned how to render splines, how to put them together, how to attach them, and uh, you know, another little handy thing for you guys to pick up for your modeling. And we have a nice goalpost to go with the football. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and uh, we'll come back with another tutorial soon. Take care, guys. Love you.